What's up everybody? Blue Gabe here. Y'all check these dudes out in the back. This is Johnny. We got Mr. Chris and Mr. Will. And these dudes are preparing for war. So let me tell you what's about to go down. We're going out snapper fishing today, maybe tile fish, who knows what. But myself, I'm going for dinner. I'm gonna try to catch some lane snapper, some mangrove snapper, maybe a mutton on just a typical, you know, dead bait rig. What I'm comfortable with. Now these guys, take it to a whole new level. I was gonna challenge them today until I see them getting this gear rig. They're all back here, literally preparing for war. Check out these jigs. So if you're not familiar with this, they do slow pitch and fast pitch. And these are just big, beautiful chunks of lead that sink really fast and they're gonna put hooks and we're gonna show you all of that later. But in this video, I'm gonna go out and just try to catch fish the way I do it. And in the meantime, these three are gonna be fishing while I'm fishing and we're gonna see who catches the most. Now, I do have an advantage in my opinion because I'm using real bait, real dead sardines. But these guys have been known to put it to the fish on these jigs, so it's gonna be interesting to see what the outcome is. In the same time, Kelly's gonna film a video on her channel, Kelly Young, a how to do this style of fishing. From start to finish, they're gonna go over details, they're gonna go over all of that. I don't have time to do it today on my channel because I've gotta get in, edit this video, haul butt down to the Everglades to do a video tomorrow for Peacock Bass and Oscars, then to Mr. Trevor's to go turkey hunting the day after that. So today I'm literally just going after a few fish. If they outfish me on these jigs, great. We're gonna eat that fish too. But be on the lookout for Kelly's channel to do a really cool jigging video with these guys. Cause check out the gear they got. I mean, they are literally cocked, locked, and ready to rock. This thing is like what I would catch Oscars on but they catch monster fish on it. Like, what? what's the lowest braid you go down to, 10 pounds? I've gone down to 10 pounds, Hess. Yeah, I mean, you. I like to stay above 15 pounds, Hess, if I can, but the the, the, the weird thing, the thing that people find uh, um, interesting about what we do is as we go deeper, we scope down our line. So if we're going out to 800 feet, we'll go down to 15 pound test. As the further in we go, the, the larger we go. So we'll go to 30 pound test, you know, in like the 120 foot range. You guys, let me tell you something about Blue Gavi. We'll go big or go home. I'll bust this dude out. This is my new dial or whatever, something, another electric reel that's so awesome. So it's really cool to be with these guys and learn the different types of fishing because bait can be a huge huge factor in fishing and catching fish these guys do it without having to buy bait typically kelly and i always have to buy bait a porpoise just come up right there anyhow and when we are buying bait we're stuck buying garbage like this now when i was young pretty much all the way until a few years ago this was six dollars it's now like, I think I paid $19 for this. And they're freezer burn garbage sardines. I can still catch fish on them, but I'm interested to learn how to do this because it'll eliminate buying bait. And that's what we're gonna do today. How long does that bait last you? Not very long once it warms up. Now you don't have to make a mess of your boat. <laughs> well, we're gonna do that no matter what. <laughs> Something's getting put in this boat today, period. I don't care, Kelly brought her spear gun, we will get in and shoot it if we can't catch it. It is a full moon though, that's not a good thing for us, but I think the fish are gonna bite in the middle of the day the best. So we've just been sitting here out of the idle zone, getting everything ready. We now have about a nine mile run offshore and we will see you there. All right, so we're out here. We're about eight miles offshore and this is one of the coolest things about Seymour Maps and why it literally helps you catch more fish. So if you notice all this white, that's predominantly sand. And then you see these blue and green spots, it's color coordinated. It starts shallow and goes out to deep. Now, if you notice in this area, it's green. That's because they know that there's rocks there and they mapped it. Look how in depth and in detail the bottom is with these Seymour maps. So now, all these spots like this, old timers had them and you would get lucky and run over them, like make a mark like that with your depth finder and you would maybe have that spot. But what Seymour Maps has done for everybody is literally a novice now can buy these chips and come out to these spots. And a lot of people think, well, man, now all the good spots are gonna be gone. Well, in my opinion, if this spot wasn't on here and somebody came by and saw me catching fish, they're gonna think, well, I'm sitting on the only spot and more than likely anchor up right up on me. Now, if they have a Seymour map, they can just zoom out and say, well, heck, right here's a good spot, right there's a good spot. Look at all this. And 
and they might scatter out a little bit. So to me, I really, really find Seymour maps to be beneficial to everybody. So when you do pull up to a spot, if you notice, this is my track, I went across it, now I'm gonna go back to it. Unfortunately for me, I've gotta now rig up my rods, get my bait out, these guys are already ready to rip. Hey, can we drop our jigs? In a second, <laughs> so when I pull up here, and I mark these fish again, they're immediately fishing. I then now have to get all my stuff rigged up. But when you do pull up on a spot, you need to set your drift one time and maybe not even put baits out unless you're jigging because that's easy. But the way I fish, I'll pull up to a spot, mark the fish, I'll put it in neutral and see which way I'm gonna drift. And you can see that with your track. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna drift offshore or inshore or straight north, or maybe there's a south tide. So there's a lot, of, a lot to this to what we do and if you pay attention today I'm going to try to go over details on why we use what we use and how we use it so you can see I'm pulling back up on the reef I don't need to even look at my depth finder because this is real now you will notice over here in just a second you're gonna see it start marking fish as soon as we get up here on this we do have a barge coming our way a big barge look right here see the boat it's getting up on there look right here Sun. Honk, honk. Anyhow, that just shows how accurate it is. This guy thinks he's, that we're gonna like drive in front of him, but we're not. <laughs> I mean, we're doing pretty close. I might want to bust a Yui though. <laughs> so this is a great example of why I use what I use right there. Here's the reef, here's the fish. But we did mark a bunch more fish right over here, so I'm gonna go there first. And get out of the barge's way. That barge best get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> he might run us over though. We don't really want to get in his way. Watch right here, Kel. So one of the things about tracks, I know right there is where I marked the big wad of fish because I watched my track as we did it. Now watch as I do a U-turn on it. Why's this guy got a crimp our style right now? He's going right over our spot. <laughs> At least we're not down tank diving. That would be scary oh. as can be. He probably thinks we're some pirates or something. All right, we're on the fish. Y'all can drop. So I'm now completely rigged and I want to show you something again, how I said you want to set your drift and see how you drift. So as you can see right here is the reef. Look how we drifted off of it. Typically we would drift right down it because this is north and we normally have a north tide. Today we have a west wind going this way. So I drifted off of it. So now I wanna come all the way back up here and start on the west side of the reef so I drift diagonally across it. That's why it's so important to always do that before you start fishing. So now I'm gonna drive back up drop some baits and hopefully start catching some fish so here you go I've just got my little setup this is actually a setup I bought Jake it's a mags rod it's a really short for what we use it's short and that's good for Jake but I hijacked it today and I'm using it so I've got a four ounce lead some two ounce circle hooks just a regular 40 pound test leader and 30 pound beyond braid is my main line and the boys are already up front jigging. They got one heck of a jump on me. There's one mark right here that we always mark a ton of fish on. I think all right, we're just about there. Now remember when you're using circle hooks, you don't need to set the hook. You just want to put a big bow in the line and start reeling. We're in 130 foot of water. It's really weird when we get a west wind. It completely throws off our entire drift. <laughs> now, one thing I will say, Mr. Will pointed it out. When it comes to jig fishing, that's like bow hunting. Right now, I'm rifle hunting. It's all what you prefer. Some people like to bow hunt, some people like to rifle hunt. I like to meat hunt. Oh. Unfortunately, that was just a blue runner, but my bait's still on. I can drop it straight back down. Uh oh, look! Oh. Bottom or fish? <laughs> Fish. fish. We got a head shake over here. There you go. It's a good fish. 
Give him up. I'm gonna say Amberjack. Little Amberjack. Or a big blue runner. Click down the star drag a couple times with this guy. There you go. Come on. We got shocks. We what were we saying about bow hunting? <laughs> Boo! Some people oh, know. That's Come what you on. get for smack talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that man. was a big fish. <laughs> oh, man. Dang, I'd have missed a big one. We're just now starting to mark a lot of fish, guys. My bait might be gone. Might have just snatched the bait. He just did a blue gape special. He talked smack and then lost his fish. <laughs> Y'all see that? That's Jake Arrington's rod. Don't tell him I'm using it, though. Out of sight and out of mind. It is definitely more breezy than we thought today. Yeah. I'm cold. I'm like shivering. <laughs> what depth do you think that jigs are most valuable? Every depth. Uh, yeah. Oh, so you like them in all depths? All depths. There's something on your line, I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're just typical people. We get hung up. We get hung up. So, but your preferred depth, is it 300, Honestly, 100? The preferred depth is probably somewhere between 220 and 320. Just a touch over two and a touch over three. We like deep water structure because the bigger snapper and grouper will hang out there. Scamp, black, and red grouper, and then mutton snapper. There you go. I said we went over a knot of vermilions, but I was hoping they were a little bit bigger than these. These guys are too small. All right, you guys, as typical Blue Gate fashion, we forgot some of our batteries today. Luckily, we brought our anchor, which is this awesome power source right here. And it really is more than just that. If our batteries was to go dead in this boat, which happens often, we could have a wire short out or whatever we have the problem, or even just a simple GoPro battery dying. I can bring my chargers, bring my cell phone chargers, and we can plug it in right here on the boat. And while we're filming, like right now, we had to switch to Kelly's GoPro while mine's dead. 30 minutes, these batteries are going to be perfectly charged and we can keep going on about our day. Anchor is recognized as the world's number one charging brand. They make the most long-lasting portable power stations on the market. Their unique batteries can be used 3,000 times and will still have 80% of the capacity, which is six times longer than other portable power stations. Anchor 521 can be recharged to 80% within 1.4 hours and Anchor 535 within 2.4 hours. Anchor 521 and 535 both have built-in USB-C ports, which allow you to charge your devices and recharge the portable power stations. Both the Anchor 521 and the 535 come with power saving modes, smart LEDs, and a light up bar, in case you're in a blackout or you just need a flashlight. Y'all don't wait any longer. Check out Anchor today. I'll have the link in the description below this video. So the first spot was a bus. We've now moved to the second spot. Look at this rubble pile right here on Seymour Maps. Now look at my lines or our lines dropping down right on top of all of these fish. Can you see the jig on the screen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Golly, there's a lot of fish under the boat. Oh my gosh. I'm jigging my mind is down there with the jig <laughs> like I'm I'm down there and I'm my arms are moving the rods moving but I'm with the jig kind of feeling how it's fluttering oh yeah oh, oh. there you, you like go like that fluttery effect like, look at just that. like that baby that I was, was down there with this jig <laughs> that was like perfect Hollywood right there <laughs> there you go oh wait got a right mean head bottom. shake let's go could be anything. I was here. a couple cranks off the bottom. He's bouncing around. All right, now that I feel like I got him set, now it's just really a matter of just keeping the rod tip pointed down, using the reel to stay tight to the fish, bring him to the surface. I think John's on too. 
There you go. Double up. Why well, y'all gotta make me look bad? All right, Gabe, come on. Luck Sharks the are all over him. Oh, shark just oh, ate shark. him. Shark, oh, I watched the shark eat him. I just got creamed. Shark too. Right. I watched the shark eat him. <laughs> no. All right. So. I got shark too. Both. Now I can both. see how strong this braid is. Yeah, let's test this stuff mm. out. You ready? Should I go into lockdown? Look at that. You're gonna lose everything. So when yeah. this happens on a jigging setup, a lot of these reels like this OSHA jigger, that's not a clicker. What that's gonna do is that's gonna lock my spool. So I'm gonna click that and then it's gonna be game over. I'm gonna be fully locked down. Either the jig's gonna pull, or the line's gonna pop. Let's see what happens. Lock down. Oh I'm gonna steal me with this shark. Oh, I'm getting some back. Could be no, a lot. Both have the same shark, but I watched one shark eat him, I know that. It could be a little reef shark or something. Oh, he ain't breaking me, so. Go. Let's see what he is. See if we can get him up here. Can I get my jig back? Nope, he's still there. <laughs> so what's going on over here, Blue Game? I'm just oh. trying to get bit. Can I get my jig back? Can I get my jig back? Is that lucky? That's a once in a lifetime deal right there if you got your jig back from a shark. Just a lot of line out. Game they out. are good knots, as we discussed before. I, I got my jig what? back. All right. Oh my gosh, how did that even happen? <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I'm come on you. Are you? Wow. You're on me for sure. Go under me. So you're still on the shark, oh. and you're on each other. Really, I'm, because these rods are so light, oh, you know, yeah. it's a game of being light because you're working a jig all day long. So even though I know that I have a big fish on, it's probably a shark, I'm not going to go higher than level with the ocean right there. So I'm just going to kind of keep working them like this. Finesse. Yep. As soon as you do this, you high stick up here, you're going to break these rods. They're not designed to do that. But I do have a nice reel on here that is capable of, of catching big fish. Now well, it's a matter of time. Are you still fighting the shark? Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. gaining on him, Gabe. I'm gaining on him. Well, let's see if you I can get him to the boat. Those paws, right? I almost am willing to bet y'all had good eating fish on because sharks only eat what's good to eat. They don't eat sure. trash fish. Yep. I know this from experience. Honestly, it felt like a mutton snapper. Yeah. Out here, you better put them things in high gear when you go to cook something. It's like real. You'd rather pull the hooks out of the fish than let sharks eat him. There's no bottom out here. It's just sand. Yeah. Maybe it's like the world's smallest golden tile. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Yo. What do we got? Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, How did you catch a Toro out here? How that's not a Toro, that's a dang Alfonsino. 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 Oh my gosh, how cool. It's a cool Look fish. You just caught an Alfonsino off of our coast. Nick stands that's, to get your heart out. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh, check that out. Wow. Here, let me see it this way, the better lighting. That is, I've never even, well, that thing would be so cool in the fish tank. Oh my god. That would be cool. That'd be cool. Wow. It's like fat too. Like look at his belly. He's chunky. All right, off the bottom. Off the bottom now? Yeah, so Gabe said to reel up. So I just started ripping it a little bit faster just to see if there was some pelagics in the area. But, uh, this guy hit. Let's see what he is. We got an hey, electric this, rod over look here. Look at this guy, Mr. Wheel right here. He's got a battery. Pa this is my kind of guy. <laughs> hey, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> look at that thing. Digging lives for everyone. That's an electric re reel, if you're wondering. It looks like something I'd be flipping the reeds for a big bass with. For real? That's really cool. I need this for gator hunting, so I don't have to reel my bait since it's so far away. It's got a USB a charger on it as well, that battery. Yeah. Dang. Start your car too. Good thing I got my anchor pack when your battery dies. We'll just charge you right the back. Johnny gig, bro. We'll get you one. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the all product. We have. Yeah. We carry in our store. Oh, yeah. Hey, you can get it at Johnny Jig. Is it JohnnyJig.com? Yes, sir. Yeah, Jig, yep. All right, he's coming up. Let's go. Where we got over here? Oh, we got a king. 
What? The, all right. What? No, no, it's a bonita. No, be the. Sorry. Good old Jimmy, bonita. Let's give him Get him in. Flip, oh, her, flip him in. Oh wait. Come down the rod way. can't handle the flip. Oh, no. Yeah. I want him for bait. Yeah, you do. There we, we go. go. Freeze pull. We just set up a new drift. Big fish. You get hit too. Oh my what goodness. What got? Oh, his came off. Oh, electric. Oh no, he's not going. I got something big. The jiggers bro. are whooping me. <laughs> Let's go. Team Johnny Jigs over here. Bro, <laughs> that's a big fish, dude. Whatever he is, he's big. He got the right reel. Oh I'm gonna get God. out of your way, Don. Yeah, I got the yeah. same one here. Oh. What if the one big fish ate both of your baits? <laughs> that would be. That would be fun. Definitely oh, secure. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, is he coming up? He's coming up. Oh. Definitely a tuna. Be erratic like that. Coming up like that. Big fish, bro. Come on, come on. Gotta... Yeah, your fish is sky to the surface. Why aren't you using the electric? Are you hooked up? Yeah, yeah oh. I got a big fish on. I only have 20 pound test on, so I gotta be careful. Gentle. So you're still hooked up? Yeah. Dang. I think it was swimming straight oh. up. You just came off? Oh. Come on, get that thing up here. I couldn't catch up to the electric. It was swimming straight up. Huh. I had so much slack. I couldn't get my hand off it. Is that, does that reel tell you how deep or no? Yeah, it hit it about, about three and a quarter. You still want a little? Yeah, I'm in. Come on. Did you break yours off? I broke off. They got to step up their gear. <laughs> this old 15 pound test bluegill rig <laughs> but i can't say nothing because i can't even catch a fish so so far they got the only fish i have i literally we're in a wreck in 480 foot of water i have bonita and squid on the bottom and it's not even getting bumped all right uh-oh we're gonna get tangled we got 75 feet we got color 75 feet we got color man that's neat Whatever it is, it sure fought a lot bigger than it probably really is. It Light might have got bit in half her tail hook. Yeah. Coming up. It's, it's spinning kind of weird. Is it a shark? Did I get shark? Keep reeling. A <coughs> black fin, black uh, fin tuna. Oh, look how cool. Oh, that we're gonna catch these. Belly hook, that's why. We're yeah. gonna catch some more now that we know they're here. Nice, bro. Look at him belly hook. Look how big that jig is. 500 grams. And they both got hit. So what that tells me is we need to try to tuna fish, I guess. Yeah. I'm gonna bleed him and put him directly on ice. Good job. All right, thank you. Thanks for catching the sushi. Oh, that was fun. All right, we got another one on the Johnny jig. Yeah. Let's go. Right, they're just making me look bad now, so I tied on my own Johnny jig and I'm still not gonna bite. <laughs> Let's see. You gotta use a slow pitch outfit. What does it feel like though? What do you think? It's, man, Hedge it's down? very deep down there, so okay. hard to tell at this point, but uh, it doesn't feel huge. But I definitely tap bottom, so. Do you think it's edible? Oh, I think, oh, I think, oh that was good. Feels edible. Definitely right. feels edible. But, uh, now that I know he's off the bottom, I think we're away from the sharks at this point. I can just kind of... Oh, Chris, Chris has hooked up over give here. Me bad jig. Dang. Did you pick out the bad color or what? Yeah, I guess I did. Got Chris up, hooked up over here on the Johnny jig. Hooked up, baby. You're hooked up too? Yeah. Hooked up, baby. On the drop. Like 300 feet. Well, why don't y'all just take over my video? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the blue Johnny jig. <laughs> All right, we got to be getting... Getting close. Wait, the electric is hooked up too? No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. He just got heavier. No, I'm just he just woke up. Out. Yeah. He realized he was hooked. Yeah. How you doing over here, Chris? I'm doing. You're doing? He's coming up. All right. Let me know when the first one sees color. I got color. Oh, you got color? I got color. Uh oh, head shake. Head shake. Tuna fish. What? Another Tuna black fish. fin. Wow. Are you flipping that thing in here? Yep. Good job. Awesome. On the jig. On the jig. Come on, babe, step up your game. 
down there. We got another black fin in the boat. Getting hot. Oh, He's he just woke up too. We're about a hundred feet down rope. still. That's it. You just point and reel. Nice and steady. And we're traumatized from the the previous shark taxing. So it's like get these fish up. Nice little blackie. Yeah. Tuna shake. Deep color. Oh, getting some color. You want them in the line? Looking tuna s. Leave them there. You got it. Bro. Looking tuna e. What do you know? Or bonita e. Oh, oh bonita. Wait, bait. wait. What do you got, bonita? Yeah. Bait and sushi. You got it. Oh, it's a bonito. Ben oh, bonito. Oh, it's a skipjack. Yeah. Yes. See. Cool. I've never seen whatever the heck that is. It's a that's an Atlantic Bonito. I've never seen one of them. An Atlantic Bonito. Whoa. But are they edible? They oh, are edible. very good. And they have kingfish family. They have a white flesh. Well, are you, is he hooked up too? That might be our catch and eat fish. Yeah, yeah. it is. They're really good, Gabe. So here it is. This is my first Atlantic Bonito. I have never seen one. They have gnarly, gnarly teeth. And I'm going to show you more of this back at the house. As you can see, my whale is a little bit bloody. The reason I do that, I'll put him in there and he'll be able to swim around and pump all that blood out. And once he's done, then we'll put him on ice. So now that we have this fish in here bleeding out, we're actually going to stop fishing on my video. The next time you see us, we're going to be in there cooking these two awesome fish. And we're going to go over some of the jigs that we used today at the end of the video. Right now, though, we're going to start Kelly's how to slow pitch jig fish. And she's going to show you how to do it, what, why they use the gear, everything you need to know. So make sure you check out Kelly's channel and we'll see you all at the house. In, I don't know about four hours, but really it's going to be right now. And just like that, we're back. Chris just brought up some of the rods. This is where I keep my boat, obviously under this big pavilion. This is Mr. Johnny himself, and they wore me out today on the slow pitch jigs. I got one fish though. I hijacked Mr. Chris's, what do you call them, Bonitos? Yeah, Atlantic Bonito, yeah. Atlantic Bonito. I've never even seen one, never even heard that they were here. Aubrey actually called me my brother who owns fish rolls and said, that's a really cool fish, where did you catch it? I said, I can't tell you everything. We just caught it in the water right in the corner of the mouth. This dude right here was the star of the show today. Not all the time, but today was a good day. Today definitely was a good day. Look at these gnarly little reels though. Yep. But most importantly, that's come over right here. Look at this beautiful specimen. First one I've ever seen in my life today, ever. Never seen one before. Babe, can you hand me the Danko out of there, please? It's right by the steering wheel. Look at her, she's in her lugging coolers. Thank you. At least the boat's in the shade. Still dirty though, the smaller one. If I can give y'all one good piece of advice, you need to get what I'm about to show you. Starbright, salt off. I put it in a little dispenser, we'll spray the whole entire boat down with it. Then rinse it back off with fresh water and literally all your salt will be gone. Then all you gotta do is come back and touch up the little bit of bloody spots. Come in here and show them these teeth. That thing is nasty. I'm super curious to see what this fish looks like inside. Because obviously, oh, oh, they were right. They were definitely right. It's white inside. Like a mackerel. Yep, just like a mackerel. And here goes nothing. Let's see what it looks like inside. I'm curious too. Leave a comment below if you've ever caught one of these. I can say it looks a lot like black fin tuna right now. Look at that. That's pretty interesting. Definitely not like Benita. Definitely not like Bonita. Looks like we should be eating it raw, not cooked. Look at that. Mm. Now I know they're gonna have a bloodline, just like any of the tuna species or mackerel species. 
So I just cut some of it off and they actually don't have that much blood. Look at that. I'm gonna go inside and marinate this in some olive oil and some Lowry's garlic salt. Once my grill gets heated up, we're gonna have some Bonito tacos. But can y'all smell it? In this bag, I put olive oil, garlic, some minced jalapenos, a little bit of lime, and a little bit of ginger. And I just marinated the tuna in it just for a minute. I'm gonna lay it all right here on top of these onions, a little bit more diced up jalapenos, because it's all going on a taco shell. Now the fish doesn't look like it's grilled just right because this is a smoker style grill. It doesn't do grill marks. But you can rest assured, it's gonna be good and we'll see all at the table in just a minute. So let me tell you all about this dipping sauce and just exactly what it is. Garlic, ginger, mayonnaise, kimchi paste. And it don't get no better. We're gonna take some of this sauce and lather it on here. Not too much, because it's actually really salty. Kimchi is salty, mayonnaise is salty. You like onions, Chris? Yep. Because you're getting the first plate, because you straight wore the fish out today. <laughs> I can't deny that. Fantastic. Look at the clever necklace he has on. The jig. Right? Clever. Do you think it's a Johnny jig, though? It is. <laughs> The guy, one of our customers owns a couple jewelry stores and he gave these to all of us. Christmas for Christmas. Oh, cool. Make sure y'all check out Kelly's video because these guys did work today and I barely showed y'all any of it. Kelly's going to go in, in depth into how they do it and why they do it, what got them into it. And it's all going to be right here at this house after they're done fishing. Because to be honest with you, while we were fishing, we were catching lots, well, they were catching lots of fish, I should say. Hey, you were trying hard. You were putting us on the fish. Yeah, I was. I was being a good captain. I'll dig in. Tell me what you uh, think. It's I probably pretty hot, it. though. There you go. Okay. Probably smoking hot. Mm. Y'all can take a bite first. Yeah. Mmm. What does it taste like? Fish? <laughs> Another onion. It tastes like Atlantic Bonito. No way. It's really? probably going to be a little bit spicy because I dumped some jalapenos no, in there. No, I'm mm. not getting that yet. So I'm going to give you a jalapeno. I it's love just them. delicious. It's good. Them. It's really good. Yeah, it's got a little kick. I, I, I got a little, little something something in there. Oh, yeah, something. excellent. Mm, thank you, Gabe. Mm. Appreciate it, man. I have... Um, I needed this. <laughs> Man, Black and good. tuna scales all over my hand. Me too. Nice, nice. <laughs> little, little suave. Rarely do I see a fish that I've never seen before, especially here in my home turf. Cool. And explain to them real quick why we don't typically see them out front here. They're, they're down deeper, really. So a lot of guys, I think, locally, and a lot of fishermen, we troll, you know, where, where we have baits up in the water column floating with the current. But whenever you can get a jig down to them, you're more likely to catch them. So we, we catch a lot more than somebody who's not, not jigging per se. So once in a while, you know, the guys that are trolling will pull one up um, here and there, but, but you're more likely to get them on the jig down deeper. Yeah, they got teeth, so they're bound to cut you off too. Your fishing floor. I did have a bite because my new jig was cut out, but no. all of this and more you're gonna learn in Kelly's video. They were catching those fish in three to four, 450. 500 foot of water, you would never catch those fish trolling. Yeah. So it wasn't, literally, Seymour Maps and Johnny Jigs was the only reason we caught a fish today. Seymour Maps allowed me to see where we fish. I never knew that spot existed. And we caught everything on the jigs. The, the Seymour Maps has definition on it better than, than any of, of the, the overlays that you could put on your chart with pinpoint accuracy and that's the thing so like if you see a little bump on Seymour maps when you go over it your transducer is going to read that bump it is there and it's real you know that's that's Seymour maps is a big deal we we use it you know all the time every, every time we go out uh, when every bump is worth checking out that's right oh yep I mean this with all honesty I was not going to cut them any slack today with the jig fishing I went to go meat hunting he was what you saw so them do, they did on their own. They outfished me pound for pound with the jig. That wasn't because I took them 
to like a jigging spot. No, I was trying to catch fish. So you got to give credit where credit is due. And make sure you check out johnnyjigs.com. Everything they use today is on that website. What's your YouTube channel? Johnny Jigs TV. Yeah, so if anybody wants to get more in depth into slow fish jigging, you can go to Johnny Jigs TV. Like, but obviously we're gonna we're gonna we, we're digging it really well in Kelly's channel as well. You know, a lot of the nuts and bolts of what you need to do. Yeah, and you're gonna be surprised what Kelly pulls off in her video. I mean, she pulled off a hail mary. So <laughs> <laughs> those might have grew a little bit after today. Oh, they did. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Make sure you check out Seymour Maps and Johnny Jigs. Both of them will be in the link below this video, including Anchor, which was the sponsor to this video. Check out Kelly Young's channel. But right now, we're going to finish these awesome tacos, probably eat some more. We got a whole lot of fish to clean, a whole lot to talk about in Kelly's video. Hey, right now, though, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape.